Wait, 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 wait. Before you go, I'm just gonna let you know right now. I'm not going to talk about all the pain and suffering that's done to animals in order to provide you meat that you don't need. I'm not gonna talk about the many diseases associated with eating meat such as cancer and diabetes and high blood pressure. This is not gonna be one of those videos, okay? This is going to be a very practical, practical way to transition over to becoming vegan or even just adapting a plant-based diet, okay? Now, first and foremost, let me just tell you the differences between the two. When you are plant-based, that means that you are focusing strictly on the diet, meaning that you're not eating any animal products, okay? No animal products, no dairy, no fish, okay? Fish is considered a meat, all right? No fish, all right? And if you are vegan, you are adapting that diet, but you are also adapting the lifestyle where you're trying to minimize the cause of suffering and harm to animals. So you might wear certain clothing that's, that's vegan where it's made in certain shops. Um, you, will, you won't wear leather. Um, you'll, you'll basically adapt the lifestyle of how can I reduce the amount of harm that I'm causing on the planet as well as the animals, okay? So that's the vegan lifestyle. That means you're looking at your products, your toothpaste, all that good stuff. That's a vegan. This is a plant-based diet, okay? So let's get right on into it. The number one thing that helped me transition directly from being somebody who was pescatarian over to being vegan was going to restaurants, okay? Going to vegan restaurants. It wasn't a book, okay? Although this is helpful, China study, all right? It was me going to restaurants. Now, let me explain, okay? When you are a carnivore, when you are somebody who eats meat, most of the time, there are things that hold you back from becoming vegan. And most of the time, the real reason is we don't wanna give up certain foods that we like. Let's just keep it real. For me, it was pizza, it was pasta, it was lasagna. You know, I had my favorite Italian places, etc. I didn't wanna give those things up. And I'm sure you got meals that you don't wanna give up as well. So here's the thing that you have to look at. You simply have to replace the things that you like with the vegan alternative. And that can be exciting because now you can sort of go on a journey to find, okay, what can I find that's similar to this? It's just like being in a relationship, right? When you're in a relationship and you break up with somebody, they always say that that gap of time between you not being with that person, you gotta fill in that void with something else. So they tell you to go work out, they tell you to you know, read books, they tell you to just you know, do things for yourself, right? Because you gotta fill in that time, hang out with your friends, etc. When you decide to go vegan, there's a void there, right? You're looking at your fridge, you're saying, yo, what am I gonna do with all these products, right? You gotta fill in that void. That means you gotta look for vegan cheese. That means you gotta look for alternatives for milk. The key thing is you have to find the alternative for the things that you like, okay? So why is going to restaurants important? Because in the beginning, you don't really know what the alternatives are. You don't really know what your options really are. So when you go to these vegan restaurants or you try these vegan options, you're gonna get to see how restaurants put together certain recipes. And then from there, you can take the idea and come home and do it yourself. And if you can't go to a restaurant, because I know some of you are saying, man, I ain't got the money to be going to restaurants every day. I feel you, I feel you. There's Pinterest, there's Instagram, there's books like this, cooking books. The bottom line is you have to replace what it is that you love to eat with the alternative, guys. I'm Caribbean, there was foods that I loved, you know, growing up, oxtails, jerk chicken, all these things that I loved. I had to find a substitute. And I'm here to tell you that there are many, many substitutes out there. There's seitan, there's tofu, there's all these things. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking about protein and meat and all of that. Look, I haven't seen a single person die from protein deficiency, okay, period. So let's, let's stop all of that. You can find protein in a multitude of other sources, okay? You're not going to die 
from being protein deficient on a vegan diet. Let's let's just let's just kill all of that noise. I'm still alive. I haven't eaten meat in two years, two and a half years or so. So I'm living proof. I'm not a ghost, right? I'm I'm right in front of you. I'm talking to you right now. So going to restaurants is going to help you because you're gonna look at the menus. You're gonna try different foods. You're gonna see how Brussels sprouts can be made. You're going to you're going to see how certain foods that you overlook when you go to the grocery store. You overlook kale, you overlook all these things, bok choy, all these things. And then when you go into a restaurant and then they, the way they saute it, because here's the thing guys, it's not that you love meat, chicken, bacon, all this stuff. You love the flavor, you love how it's seasoned, guys. Because if I give you raw meat, you're not gonna bite into it and eat it. Let's just call it what it is. You're gonna cook it, you're gonna add some salt, pepper, whatever it is you're gonna add to it. It's the same thing with the vegan diet. All you gotta do is transfer your knowledge of seasoning, your knowledge of flavors over to a different world of food. Potatoes, carrots, broccoli, all these things you can finesse. Jackfruit, you can finesse all these foods to make them taste the way you want them to taste, okay? And I've had it all. I've had vegan lasagna, vegan pizza. Like I said, growing up in New York, big pizza head. But now they got restaurants in, in New York that's, that sells vegan pizza that's off the chain. So it's, it's, it's the most critical thing that I think a person has to do. Cause at the end of the day, people tend to fall off because they, 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 they have trouble with finding things to eat or making things on their own. Guys, there's an alternative for everything. Eggs, pancakes, you name it. Once you have an idea of those things, you can add your own twist to it and it becomes fun. It becomes exciting because now you're starting to challenge yourself. You're saying to yourself, you know what? Let me see if I could duplicate that curry recipe that I like. Let me see if I could duplicate this lasagna recipe, this brownie recipe with some vegan alternatives. And when people try it and they like, damn, this, this is the bomb, you're gonna feel really good, trust me. And so, I'm gonna tell you right now, I also have a cauliflower barbecue recipe on my page. I'm gonna leave the link down below. Guys, there's so many alternatives, so many options. It's a whole new world. Don't be scared of it, embrace it. But remember, there's many different options out there, but there's only one you. And your health is important, and that's number one. You are no use, no good to nobody out there if you're not in good health. So, consider it, all right? That's it for this video today. It's your boy Bill for anything. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, like, share, all that good stuff. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're gonna start this journey and let me know what cool restaurants you have in mind. There's plenty of restaurants out here. I'm in Dallas, baby, and I still find some vegan options. So there is no excuse. This is barbecue city, okay? This is pork barbecue brisket city and I'm still flourishing, so I don't wanna hear it. All right, guys, it's your boy. Peace and love. I'll catch you on the next video. I'm out.